Amen. God bless you, our Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church family and friends, those faithful, essential few who are here with us in the sanctuary, those connecting with us via Facebook Live and those who've connected with us via the Zoom um, teleconference. I thank God for all who are with us here on this Sunday, this fourth Sunday in January, five Sunday month in January. So we got one more coming, but I thank God for all who have connected with us right here and right now. Beloved, on any given Sunday, you would have the opportunity, we were just having in-person worship, to go out and invite family and friends to connect with us. And for some, they would say, well, if I can make it, if I get up on time. But right now, beloved, you have the opportunity via the technology available to us for you to reach out to somebody right now to say, hey, I'm at church. You can be here with me. So I encourage those who are using their technology, reach out to your family, reach out to your friends, especially as I was having a conversation with one of our dear sisters here in the church, especially those who may not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Invite them to be with us because perhaps something will be said, something will be done for them to say, what must I too do to be seen? I thank God for the disruptions that God brings in our lives. Every day God is recreating us, which means something's got to make room for something that is coming in. And on this Sunday, I hope and pray that you're ready for some recreation by God. Amen. Amen. Beloved, our call to worship. Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord in the house of the God of Jacob. And a congregation that will be here with us would say, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths, and all together we would say, For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Let us pray. Dear Lord, dear Father, we come before you now in the name of your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Dear Father, when we say that name, Jesus, dear Father, it has power in that name. In the name of Jesus, the word tells us that the world has come into being out of nothing. That God didn't fumble around with what already was. God spoke and something that did not exist came into being. And dear God, and God's recreating, God's creating, God's rejuvenating, God's resuscitating, God's restorative power. He has called forth his church, us dear God, to come and to worship together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I pray, dear Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that in unity and solidarity, we will be your people as we seek you as our God. Holy Spirit, take control of us right now. Guide us and show us the path and the way forward. Help us not to be afraid of the darkness of the unknown that you may be leading us into. For out of it, dear Father, you will bring forth new light. Birth new light in us. Birth new light around us. Birth new light through us, dear God, in this day. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Beloved, just a few words that I have for you on this Sunday before we get to the song of inspiration. Um, by way of reminder, we will be having church conference on this upcoming Tuesday at 6 o'clock. The packets of information are here for you at the church, and along with um, the church conference on Tuesday evening, we'll be having the installation of our officers. And so I'm asking all of our officers to please make sure that you're in attendance virtually for us to do this, not in the fashion that we normally would, but we're in a different day and a different time, but we serve the same God. And God is making a way for us to connect, to undertake this. Please make sure that you make yourself available to connect with us. Amen. And the packets will be available from 9 to 2, the church secretary's hours on Tuesday, the, the day of the conference. Also, I'm so thankful to have a high-quality problem. Um, some people have problems, and some people have what I like to call high-quality problems. High-quality problem that we have had is, is that for the 30 books that we got for Hope Wednesday, they're all gone now. That's a high-quality problem. So now we have ordered 20 new books that prayerfully should be here by Tuesday that hopefully for those who can get by should be able to pick those up on Wednesday. Hope Wednesday will be beginning on this Wednesday coming at 6.30. We're studying Joseph. And I'm hoping and praying that you will be there with us because I believe if there's any time that we needed to see somebody go through some stuff and see God bless them on the other side, it's a time like now. During this year, we're claiming to be the year of God's restoration. Also, I do also want to make mention, we are a praying church. And there is power in prayer. On Wednesday at noon, we have noonday prayer. Even if sometimes people don't have a word to say, 
they can participate in praying with us. It's a time when we don't just list the issues and concerns we have, talk about God's provision as well as our petitions. We have each other praying on that prayer line. I'm encouraging you. You have the contact information or you had it. If you need to get it, reach out to the church. We can provide it to you. But every Wednesday, without fail, we've been having noon day prayer, and I encourage you to connect with us because, again, there is power in prayer. The last thing that I want to mention, we had one Sunday in 2021 when we could come together for in-person worship, and what a glorious Sunday it was. Um, with the rise in the COVID cases, we made what I believe to be a prudent, wise decision to pull back. And I say pull back because we didn't let go. On first Sunday in February, it has been our intention, and we are still moving in the direction of reopening for limited in-person worship as we were doing before. Somebody ought to say praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The statistics regarding the COVID-19 cases, we as a state were running almost up to 16%. That has dropped down to be now just north of 10%. So the numbers are moving in the right direction. They're actually lower than where they were at the end of the year when we were having in-person worship. So things are moving in the right direction. Those within the church body are getting vaccinated. For those who can, I encourage you to do that. I know we're hearing different stories going on out there. Please make sure you're listening to medical professionals, and please don't let your medical professional be the World Wide Web. Uh, please listen to medical professionals. Don't listen to what, you, what your friend said, what they heard, what somebody sent them from this and that. That is something we really should not do. The scripture tells us not to be paying attention to old wives' tales and fables. Make sure that we seek out the truth that will set us free, not the lie that will keep us in bondage. And so I encourage you, when your time comes up to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. I encourage you to do that because it will help all of us to feel safer together. So we're in, encouraged also in that the head of our trustees, the leader of our trustees, Sister Carol Perry, took it upon herself and the trustees agreed. I was participating in the meeting. We've gotten a church professionally sanitized again. And so we are as clean as we're going to be, as we did when we got reopened back in July. We did the same thing to keep you safe and to keep you healthy. And so I'm encouraging for those who can, don't let fear keep you from working out your faith. When the first Sunday comes, again, we can't have it full like it was, but for those who had the desire to come, you can come again. And for those who were inviting some of their friends to come and be with us, you can invite them to come to be with us again. First Sunday in February, when we will be celebrating Black History Month. Amen. Amen. Beloved, this morning we have uh, Sister Victoria Kane who's going to be coming to give us a powerful song of insp inspiration as we prepare ourselves to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Oh, 
change your mind? Please change my soul, Lord. Will you cleanse me through and through and through and change me to make me more like you? Lord, will you make me more like you? God, I, 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 I tell you um, that, the, that the, the ministry in that song, the, the, the power in that song, change me, change me. Beloved, I tell you, one of the things that I found in life, and I, I, I thank God for being a God who continues to teach me, who continues to um, um, show me new things, who continues to help me to understand that who I was yesterday has sometimes little bearing on who God is making me into being today. God is always desiring to change us. God never changes, but the world is ever changing. And you are a part of this world, and you should be ever changing. But you've got to decide you are going to let God change you. And God in changing you will never change you for the worse. It is always going to be for the better. Sometimes as Christians, I do believe the greatest challenge in we, we have in our lives is not not doing our worst, but the greatest challenge we sometimes have in our lives is daring to trust God into making us into our best. Some of us have got to stop being so satisfied with where we are, what we have, who we are, what we're doing, and say, God, just change me. 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 Beloved, in God's ability to change us, in God's ability to reframe us, in God's ability to reposition us. We have this thing called the living word, the holy word of God. And on this Sunday, God has a word for us as people. Continuing our journey through Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 22 through 25. The word of God reads, but thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. For thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. And I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. But thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me your God to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me, thy God, with thine iniquities. And how have I, as God, responded? I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my unknown sake. And I will not remember thy sins. Beloved, that last verse is a hallelujah moment. It's a hallelujah moment. It is a hallelujah, thank you, Jesus moment. Let us pray, dear Lord. Dear Father, in this moment that we have, where we are sanctified people, before the Holy God, I ask you now, dear Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to do a work, dear God. To do a work, dear God. To do a work, dear God. To begin right now in sensitizing mind, heart, and spirit. To be prepared, to be receivers, to be those who dare to be doers of what they have heard and received. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Help me to yield myself unto you. 
and in this moment for you to speak through me to your people who you love. And dear God, on the other side of this time that we have together in our journey through your holy word, prepare us again, not just to be those who will go out into the world. Let us dare to take the church to the world. Let us dare to be Christian in the world. Let us dare to be changed in the world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Beloved, um, we have begun not only a new year in 2021, but we have begun a new era. On Wednesday, we inaugurated the 46th president of the United States of America, President Joe Biden. No more president-elect. President Joe Biden, and the first African-American, Indo-American at woman as vice president, Vice President Kamala Harris. Beloved, this inauguration was a crown jewel of perseverance, tenacity, and cooperation with a move of God. You see, as we said, God is always changing things. Sometimes we can try to swim against the tide of God, losing instead of cooperating and going in the direction that God is leading. Amen. You see, beloved, uh, President Joe Biden is the oldest president to take office at the age of 78 years old. Now, beloved, I'm always telling our elders and our seniors that God has no retirement plans. God only has reassignment plans. If you are younger than the President of the United States of America, you need to be about doing something that matters for God. Amen. Amen. And beloved, if you are older than the President, that doesn't give you an excuse. It doesn't give you a license to do anything other than to keep on keeping on until God tells you to stop. Beloved, President Biden's tenacity has been such that he was never the Democratic nominee for president until last year. Even though he had run previously and he served as a senator for 36 years until President Barack Obama was inaugurated in 2009. And Joe Biden served as his two-term vice president. President Biden sought the wisdom of God in selecting Vice President Kamala Harris. Again, no more vice president-elect. That's over. God change that. Um, a, a, a staunch opponent in the Democratic nomination process and, 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 and Vice President Harris was not afraid of calling out candidate Biden on the campaign trail or on the debate stage. What did he do? Again, sometimes you got to look through what's right in front of you to see where God's taking you to. So he looked through all that in terms of their differences in opinion and saw an advocate who had the capacity to challenge him while also supporting him and doing what is best for this country. Thank you, God. You see, beloved, President Biden found a confidant, a friend, and, and the person who he believed could lead our country if something happens to him. In doing so, and how he campaigned, ran, and won, President Biden has begun to restore confidence that our country, which appeared to be in danger of not just losing its way, but also seeming to lose its mind, its heart, and its soul, could be righted with the right leader. Yes. Beloved, in this year, as leadership is seeking to restore godly order in the White House, we haven't seen any pictures or memes of President Biden holding the Bible upside down. Uh, 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 we should desire the same type of order in God's house and making it personal for those calling in, for those in the sanctuary, for those on Facebook Live. You should desire godly order in your house. Beloved, today's message is entitled 2021, the, rest, the Year of Restoration, Part 4. Part 4. Now, beloved, many of you know that I earned my MBA, my Master of Business Administration degree from Harvard Business School. When I list my academic achievements, that is the one that many people focus on. Harvard. They don't just call it Harvard, it's called Harvard. Now what many people do not know is that save a couple of key moments and a couple of key people in my life, I wouldn't have even have gone to Harvard. I wouldn't have been qualified to go. I wouldn't have been ready to make that, how does Sister Kane sing it, change in my life. 
You see, I've shared with many of you how a key professor at Georgia Tech, Dr. Augustine Essebwa, encouraged me to get A's at Georgia Tech like the white boys were getting A's at Georgia Tech. And the confidence that he showed me gave me the confidence to earn a 4.0 from that conversation forward during my time at Georgia Tech. And I was able to graduate in the top 8% of my class from the top industrial engineering program in the country at that time and through to this day, of which I sit on the advisory board. Now, I say all of that to give you some perspective because before I got my admission letter from Harvard Business School, before I was getting all A's in each grading period, and before I had that apocalyptic conversation with Dr. Esbobois, I had a conversation with my mother. After my first quarter at Georgia Tech, I wanted to quit. I wanted to go back to Morehouse, get my general science degree, and move on with my life. My mother, who was a college dropout after her freshman year, and who had me the summer after what should have been her sophomore year in college, told me that I needed to pray about this thing. Because she didn't know exactly what was going to happen in my life, but she thought that good things would happen for me if I would get this engineering degree from Georgia Tech. Thank God for all the praying mamas. Thank God for all the praying mamas. You see, beloved, I did as my mother suggested. I called on God. And the rest is history, or better said, the rest is his story. Because when you caught up in God, it ceases to be your story. It becomes your part in his story. Amen. Amen. Beloved, in our story of the diaspora Jews, dispersed and scattered Israel, one of the challenges that they had as a people was that sometimes it appeared that they forgot to call on the name of the Lord. And because they failed to stay in right relationship with God, God had to punish, discipline, and then restore his chosen people from time to time. In Isaiah 43 and 22, God said, But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Beloved, God was reminding his chosen people who they had been and who they were in relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Jacob, the father of 12 sons who would be the ancestors of the 12 tribes of Israel, was the grandson of Abraham, who God had made an eternal promise and covenant to make of his descendants a great people. Jacob was also the son of Isaac, the son of promise who began the legacy of Abraham. Jacob, the twin brother of Esau, was born as the least favored of his father Isaac. And his name meant to supplant, to circumvent, to assail, to overreach. Basically, his name meant that he was prone to disorder, division, and dysfunction. The Israelites, when they acted out of order, divided, and dysfunctional, became symbolic of their ancestor Jacob who often seemed to be in conflict with the order, unity, and solidarity that God expected, beloved of God's chosen people. Now, it's easy for us to do this Bible talk. We like reading these stories in the Bible and talking about these folks in the Bible, like we like to hear about stories about folks among our friends, our family, and sometimes even the church, how we like to talk about them. But do we ever spend some time talking to us about us? You see, beloved, do you ever find yourself acting out your life in a way that you also are an example of disorder, division, and dysfunction rather than being a role model of order, unity, and solidarity with God and God's people. It is not unusual to find people when operating in such a fashion as being those who find a way to call on anybody except for God. When they say something that they should not have said and have to face some consequences, they might call on mama, daddy, sister, brother, son, daughter, friends, maybe, just maybe, the pastor to pray for them. But they often do not call on God themselves. They act like they have that Jacob spirit. When they do something that they should not have done and they try to run and hide, how many of you have had to go looking for somebody sometime and say, where you been? What you been doing? We've been looking for you. They might call on mama, daddy, sister, brother, son, daughter, friends, and maybe, just maybe, they might ask the pastor to pray for them. But they often do not call on God. They act like they got that Jacob spirit. 
when they get into any kind of trouble? Has anybody been in any trouble in their lives before? Do you know somebody who's been in some trouble in their lives before? Do you know somebody who's in some trouble in their lives right now? Beloved, you might have had a word from them because they might call on mama, daddy, sister, brother, son, daughter, friends, and maybe, just maybe, they might ask the pastor to pray for them. But they often do not call on God. They act like they have that Jacob spirit. But what they often do not realize is that Jacob got a new name when Jacob wrestled with God. Jacob had an encounter with God, and it was not one where he would get his way. He had to learn to see God on God's terms. Sometimes we got to stop negotiating with God and understand God has already written a contract and when you became a child of God in Jesus' blood, you signed your name on the dotted line. You see, beloved, when Jacob wrestled with God and decided he would not let go of God until he was blessed by God, then God blessed him and he gave him a new name. A new name. Again, as the song was sung, there was a change. You see, beloved, Israel means God contended, wrestles with God, and triumphant with God. God did not name his chosen people Jacob. God named them Israel. And as God's chosen people, God wanted them to call on God as God wants you to call on God. Beloved, you might have family and friends, co-workers, or other acquaintances on speed dial on your cell phone. What about God? Can you, will you, do you get a word through to God? You see, beloved, those who have taken on the Jacob spirit need to let that go, and they need to take on the spirit of Israel. For in the spirit of Israel, God has a relationship with his chosen people like a parent often has with their own children. One of the mothers of my former church, Mount Zion in Fairburn, Georgia, Mother Evelyn Walthall, once said about children, well, when they're little, they're in your lap, and when they get big, they're on your heart. Beloved, much heartache comes to many a parent when their children go astray. And that heartache can weigh on a parent like a heavy load with no relief until they know that their children are safe and have gotten a blessing from God in their health, their wealth, and their relationships, wherever the conflict may lie. Oh, there's some praying mamas and daddies, some praying grandmothers and grandfathers who are trusting in God to bring their babies through, to bring their babies back home. You see, God told Israel in Isaiah 43 and 22, Thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. You see, those who God desired to make victorious had gone away from God, the only God who could give them victory. And God was wearied. God was tired. God was exhausted. Some parents, grandparents, family members, friends have had those children who weary us with worry tire us with tears and exhaust us with exasperation because they seem to have forgotten who they are and whose they are. How often have you gotten, as an old preacher would talk about those camel knees down there praying for a child who may not hear your prayers, but you had to get a prayer through to God because your child may have forgotten that they're supposed to pray themselves. You see, beloved, these Israelites, they gave more evidence of having that Jacob spirit rather than the spirit of Israel. And beloved, and when they go astray, the evidence is compelling in convicting them to the point of condemnation. But praise be to God, the chosen of God are not to be condemned, but we are to be convicted to the point of repentance, redemption, and restoration. Of the Israelites, God shared the overwhelming evidence in Isaiah 43 and 23. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. Beloved, on a daily basis, as a testament to the Israelites' faith, the simple things that gave evidence that the Israelites were the people of God had gone lacking. Had they gotten too busy? Were they too easily assimilated into the world around them? Had looking like, sounding like, and acting like other people become so attractive that the things of God were no longer desirable? Beloved, I know that right now we're not having in-person worship. 
But I hope and pray that as my words go out, somebody will say, uh-huh. You see, beloved, are you too busy to come gather with the church family? In person when possible or virtually when not? Beloved, do you read your Bible on a daily basis so that you can study to show that you want to be approved? Beloved, do you pray without ceasing because a child of God should always pray? Or are you too busy, too distracted, and too consumed with worldly affairs to gather, read, and pray as you know that you should? If so, then you and our ancestors of the faith, the Israelites, Got something in common. Mm. Making it historical, what should God have done with them? Making it corporal, what should God do with us? And I hope you'll take it the right way, but making it personal, what should God do about you? Amen. Beloved, on an ongoing basis, as a testament to the Israelites' faith, the sacrifice is demonstrating that God, truly the owner of all, and they, truly the stewards of a portion of what all belonged to God, were in right relationship, that had all ceased. Had the routine gotten too burdensome? Had they gotten comfortable with asking and receiving without submitting and yielding? Had the old-time religion ceased to be fashionable? Beloved, do you see yourself as a child of God who was created to give God praise, honor, and glory? I don't make a declared rhetorical statement. I'm asking you a question. Amen. Beloved, do you wake up every day with thanksgiving in your heart, a praise in your mouth, and a commitment to rejoice in the day that God has given you no matter what comes your way? Yes. Beloved, do you render unto Caesar what is Caesar's in paying your taxes while also rendering unto God what is God's in paying your tithes, offerings, and donations, not because God is broke, but because you want an unbroken relationship with God. Or are you so indifferent to God that none of this matters? So foolish to believe that since you've gotten baptized, there is nothing more for you to do than to show up when you want to while expecting for God to be an on-time God. And still struggling to let God lead you such that you still sit on the throne in your heart and leave Jesus still there knocking on the door at the same heart that your mouth confesses has been open to him while your life and lifestyle confess that is nothing but a lie. The devil is a liar. You've been hanging out with the devil. And so you done become a liar too. And because of this, you do not live as if you are recreated, joyful and faithful in giving God of your time, talent, and treasure. You too busy making yourself available to everything else and everybody else that's going on in the world. If so, beloved, then you and our ancestors of the faith, the Israelites, got a whole lot in common. Making it historical. What should God have done with them? Making it corporal. What should God do with us? Making it personal. What should God do with you? Beloved, God could have righteously condemned all. Rightfully sought to terminate the covenant with Israel, us, and you because of our collective unfaithfulness. God could have done that. But instead, God said in Isaiah 43 and 23, I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. God said to Israel, I do not want to bother you. But this is stuff is what you're supposed to do. For all that I, God, Yahweh, have done for you, this is what you are supposed to do. Beloved, last Sunday we preached about needing to do some spring cleaning in our lives. Amen. Making it historical, God was convicting the Israelites that it was time for some spring cleaning. Making it corporal, God is trying to convict us, the church, that it is time for some spring cleaning. Making it personal, and I want you to make it personal. God is trying to convict you that it's time for some spring cleaning in your life. It's time for some spring cleaning in your life. God was saying to the Israelites that I have been very patient with you, not doing what you were supposed to be doing. But never ever let it be thought in your mind that God has forgotten what you are supposed to do. 
Beloved, if you can read what God expects of you in his holy word, do not treat it as a literary journey for your intellectual stimulation. God is trying to get you to understand that his word is supposed to be a lamp unto your feet. It is supposed to be a light unto your path so that you can live your best possible life in by fulfilling the vocation, the call that God has on your life. If you're living for yourself, you're living a failed life. And to understand, God is not confused about what God expects of you. Neither should you be confused in learning and doing what God expects of you. If you desire for 2021 to be your year of restoration, it will also have to be the year where some things in your life have to change. Because somebody in the chat, if you believe some things in your life need to change, put in the chat, some things need to change. In the sanctuary, if you believe some things in your life need to change, I want to hear you say, y'all socially distanced, you ain't going to catch nothing too close to nobody. Somebody say, some things need to change. On the Zoom call, if you call in right now, if you know something ain't right in your life, say it out loud to the Lord. Some things need to change. Some things need to change. And beloved, the patience of God in waiting on you to change is evidence of the love of God for you that should be rewarded by you doing your best for God, being right with God, and desiring to live righteously for God. To do so, some things need to change. Amen. But sometimes, and I hope it's not too many who experience this, but sometimes, like a parent with an ungrateful, selfish, spoiled child, their best is wanting. Being right is lacking. And living righteously is invisible for any and all. To see of Israel, God said in Isaiah 43 and 24, Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. God was looking for Israel to buy some sweet cane to make anointing oil. God was looking for Israel to bring their, their most healthy, the most, the most fat, the most, the, most, the most wholesome of their flock to be offered to God who had given them everything. That wasn't their cow, that was God's cow. That wasn't their bull, that was God's bull. And God said in my word, I said, bring me your best and I will give you my best. But I've already given you my best, so why don't you give me your best? You see, beloved, all God could do was remind them of what they were supposed to do. Like a parent having to remind a child to clean up their room, take out the trash, get up for school, come downstairs on time, show up for work on time, pay your bills, go to church, respect your elders, treat your body like it's God's temple, and most of all, learn this, my son, learn this, my daughter, your decisions have consequences that can last a lifetime. God had given Israel everything, and like that ungrateful, selfish, spoiled to the point of sometimes being downright spiteful child, God could not even get a thank you as evidence of an attitude of gratitude. Come on now, mom and daddy. Come on now, grandma and grandpa. Don't it make you so mad you just want to right. knock somebody upside the head when you did something for one of your ungrateful children or grandchildren and they act like you were supposed to do it. And beloved, the ever-loving, ever-giving, and ever-forgiving God, like the faithful parents and grandparents who step into the gap for the sometimes woe-begone children, God continued, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. Beloved, instead of running to God, they ran from God. God had given them all that they needed, and they gave God their worst in return. My parents and grandparents, how often have you tallied up the number of times you have stood in the gap for your children and grandchildren who you kiss with your lips of love and they give you something to kiss that shows more disrespect than respect, more disdain than thanksgiving, and more disappointment than gratefulness? Instead of running to you, how often have your children and grandchildren run from you, only contacting you when they want and need something from you? Some of y'all need to stop living like you sold children and grandchildren ATMs. But with all this done, what should God do? 
What should a grandparent or a parent do? Should God just stop doing, should you? Should God just stop loving, should you? You see, God was tired of all that mess while trying to sort through Israel's broken lives to find something to bless. You see, beloved, some of you have gotten tired of all that mess while trying to sort through your children's and grandchildren's broken lives to find something to bless. You might not say it to them, but come on now, beloved. God was tired. And let's be real. Some of you got to say, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm so tired. And then you got breath in your body. And then a new day comes. And then you're still here. And then God remembered that God is the God of restoration. God remembered before Jesus came on the scene in the New Testament and before the Apostle Paul penned in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God knew all that before that even happened. Beloved, God did not wait for Christmas to come to give great gifts to the world. God had chosen them, chosen Israel, and had promised that God would be their God and they would be God's people. Therefore, God will be their God of restoration. Thank you, God. Beloved, do you need for God to be your God of restoration in 2021? And so God said in Isaiah 43 and 25, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Beloved, God always desires to restore relationships through that John 3.16 love. And God is willing to love you despite the wrong that you may have done. God, in seeking to restore you, wants to blot out your transgressions and forget your sins. Do you want God to blot out your transgressions? Do you want God to forget about your sins and just love you and 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 love you? Do you want that from God? God will do that if you will turn to God. Turn to God. And beloved, in our relationships with one another, we need to make sure that we are making room for the restorative power of God in our relationships. You see, beloved, a wound cannot heal if you keep picking at it. So God does not pick at your transgressions and sins when it is convenient to do so. God doesn't do that. We shouldn't do that to each other either. You see, beloved, a seed cannot germinate, grow, bloom, and blossom if you keep uprooting it. So God does not keep uprooting his seed of love planted in your life when it becomes too difficult because of the sometimes seemingly impenetrable hardness of your soul, sometimes seemingly immovable rocks in your heart, and sometimes seemingly prickly thorns in your mind. God doesn't do that, and we shouldn't do it either. You see, beloved, someone cannot be expected to be changed transform and come to the light of Christ's love if you continuously bring up the darkness of their past. So God does not remind you of the old you as God receives you, redeems you, and restores you to being the new you. God doesn't do that. We shouldn't do it either. If God does this for God's people, then God's people should do that for God's people. The church should be the first place people should run to not the last place they want to come. In God, Israel could expect God's restoration because of God's love for them. In Christ, we, the church, should expect God's restoration because of God's love for us. Beloved, the hymn, Just As I Am, when read as poetry, explains, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about, with many a conflict, many a doubt, fighting and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am and waiting not 
to rid my soul of one dark blot. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot. Thank you, Jesus. O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Just as I am. Poor, wretched, blind. Sight, riches, healing of the mind. Yea, all I need, all I need, all I need in thee to find. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Would welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve. Because thy promise, O God, because thy promise, O Jesus, because thy promise, O Holy Spirit, I believe. And so, O Lamb of God, God, I come. I come. Beloved, in God, 2021 will be the year of restoration in health, wealth, and relationships as we are embraced by and receive God's love through fellowship and relationship with God and God's family, the church. And in the goodness of God, we will find that that which seems to separate us from God's love is more of an excuse. Because the scripture says, nothing will separate us from God's love. Therefore, the excuse we use is one that we choose to take on to turn away from God, who will never turn from us, never leave us, and never forsake us. As a parent or grandparent who seems to have an abundance of love, unearned and undeserved for that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter, that prodigal grandchild. God has even more love for us, also unearned, also undeserved, as we sometimes play the prodigal son, as we sometimes play the prodigal daughter of God. Therefore, beloved, let us walk in that love of God. And the people of God as God makes 2021 the year of restoration. Now, beloved, we're at the cusp of the end of our journey through Isaiah. We have the final leg next Sunday. And then we will be complete. But that's me actually misspeaking because it will never truly be over. It will simply have been a journey of revealing more of God's goodness, God's greatness, and God's love. Beloved, continue to strive for God's best in your life in 2021. And do not be surprised, don't you be surprised, with whatever you go through, that God redeems it all for God's praise, for God's honor, and God's glory as 2021 becomes your year of restoration. Amen. 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 Beloved, I thank God for the sacred times that we have, have together. I, I treasure them because it is in these moments that prayerfully, um, as was sung earlier, that your change. We, we, for those of us, we're getting close to Black History Month, and one of the iconic songs of that time by Sam Cooke, a change is going to come. He was looking for social, economic, political change. Beloved, we should be striving for a spiritual change. We should be striving for a change of heart. We should be striving for a change of mind that will manifest itself in our physical. If we put too much emphasis on the things rather than the kingdom of God, we're getting it all out of whack and all out of order. You see, God's love will help us to bring the things into being that we know should be, to bring the order out of the disorder to bring function out of dysfunction, to bring love out of hate, to bring light out of darkness. And my desire, my true desire, is for us all not to be observers of that, but to be participants in the change of God. That's what God has called us for. That's what God desires for us to do. If you want to sit back, wait and watch everybody else to do the work, then you either must not truly understand what living is all about, or you really just don't care. Beloved, I'm not going to put that burden on you. I'm going to ask you, though, to take on the yoke of Christ when he says that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Therefore, choose to walk in the light of Christ's love each and every day of your life. And to do so, you must understand that you have to be a part of the body of Christ. It's just that simple. And so I say to you that the doors of the church are now open. 
The doors of the church are now open. And what does that mean? That means this sometimes difficult to understand. This sometimes challenging body that some might want to call sometimes hypocritical. This body of people who are not perfect people, but who serve a perfect God, are saying, join with us in pursuing our God. And for you to do so, you have to do it through Jesus Christ. You got to give up so he can give to you. If you believe that in this day that you have received Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit is saying now is the time for you to come. Jesus is there to receive you, and we stand symbolically as Jesus' body, waiting to receive you so we can love you into being the best you that God desires for you to be. Now, what we understand about that is you're never going to be perfect. Oh, trust. Spend some time with a real close friend. They'll point out your flaws. If you've been married for a minute, you might not want to ask your spouse, am I perfect? Oh, gosh, that might make for difficult dinner conversation. Any child who wants to understand who they really are in the eyes of their parents, ask them, which one is your favorite and why? And then let them tell you, none of y'all are my favorite. And let me tell you why. I love you all the same, but I love you all differently because all of you are different and unique. In the uniqueness of God, God has a place for everyone at his table. You need to come and start eating. Some of you are soul starved. Soul starved. If you're hungry, join with us and let us eat because he has room for all at his table. Come and be with us. We will be with you because we love you. And God loves you. If you need to connect with us, please do so. Please do so. You can connect with me directly. It was interesting. I was reading a book about pastors, and it was saying, don't give out your phone number. Jesus hung on a cross. He took a risk. I'll give you my cell phone number. I'll take a risk. My number is 404-226-2537. Now I took a risk. You take the risk. Call that number. Let's talk about the next step in your best life in front of you. Beloved, the Israelites didn't have to get resaved. They had to get restored. They were God's chosen people. If you've given your life to God through Jesus Christ as guided by the Holy Spirit, again, are you living the Israel spirit or are you living the Jacob spirit? If you're finding some time where you're spending that, you're living that Jacob spirit, it's time to get restored. It's time to get restored. Today is a very good day for you to live the rest of your best life. You've already started. Continue in the journey. That same number applies to you. We will connect with you. Connect with us. Beloved, as God blesses us with the word on this Sunday, has anybody been blessed by what has been shared on this Sunday? I thank God for you. And I'm so looking forward to us being able to come back to in-person worship with our safety, health protocols established, and us being able to gather together again. But until that time, let us understand and know that God's love will never leave us, God's love will never forsake us, and God will let dwell in us, God dwells around us. And because of that, when you walk where you go, you take God with you. And so I'm not sending you just back out into the world to battle with the world. I'm going to encourage you to go out into the world and be church. Be church. Be body of Christ. Be who and what God is calling you to be. And see how God will make your life the best it can be. Beloved, we come together and we have worshiped. And I thank God for our time in worshiping and coming together. And I will now offer a word of benediction as we prepare to depart from one another. But knowing that the spirit and love of God connects us together always. Dear Lord, dear Father, I come before you now in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you for your word that you gave unto me, dear Father. I pray that I treated it as the precious, special, treasurous gift that it is, dear Lord. As I tried to, to, to give it as best that I could in this weak vessel, dear Father, flawed as I may be. And I pray that your children, my sons, my, 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 my brothers and sisters in Christ, your sons and daughters, dear God, I pray that in connection and unity and solidarity that we will continue to strive to be your body here on this earth. And that in doing so, dear God, you will equip us for that which you have called us. That the vocation of God is made for all. 
that we will not ignore it, but that we will answer it, dear God, and that you will use us in a way that others will see you through us. And dear Lord, that you will bless us, bless us, bless us, to be able to see that while the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few, that we will see the harvest as you give the increase in our lives and in the lives of others. Bless us in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. 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 Amen.